Hey guys, welcome back to Zenfone's channel. Today we are building RG Crossbone X1. I bought X2 to pair with it, it's on the way. After a long time, I guess I can be like less salty about that I bought the entire XG UZ set. I spent a lot of money on it, mate. Anyways, I'm finally over it and actually can review it without that salty feeling of bought the entire set just like a few months before they announced RG Crossbone. Speaking of the RG Crossbone, I'm still waiting the X1 FC Bandai. When are you gonna give us the X1 FC? You know, X1 FC is actually a tragic model. XG and Robot Damage both sucks. MG is sloppy and impossible to do anything without glue. The only acceptable X1 FC is MB, which most people can't afford it. So please, if Bandai released an RG X1 FC, I'm throwing my money on the table for sure. Alright, pull ourselves back to the topic. The fascinating part of RG is that sizes won't affect the amount of excellent work that they put in, which means even though X1 is small, but it won't affect the standard performance. Since X1 is a regular box, so let's turn it and take a look at the details on the box before moving on. You know, as a person who loves Gundams and Gamplas, the instruction menu is always what I read like a novel. It's absolutely beautiful. By the looks from the menu, the pieces are quite small, so if you drop it on the floor, it's gone. The real question is, will my shaky hands affect the building progress? You know, hyperthyroid somehow turned your fingers into butter fingers. Once you take a closer look to the runners, you will see it says Crossbone Gundam instead of the full name. Just like XG or MG, Crossbone can release different variants using the same mode. Although I'm against PB for 90% of the time, but both MG and XG crossbone just sucks, and not everyone can buy an MB to solve problems. So if RG can release the crossbone variants out, that will be great for the community. Even though X2 is the first PB, but admit it, we are all waiting for the X1 FC. Just like the usual, I will put XG and RG side by side to do a comparison. Now, cut the chatting and we'll meet again in the review. Before going into the review, allow me to do a quick introduction to Canberra Hobby Center, a new hobby shop in Canberra, ACT. This shop has a large range of tools, paints, and model kits. Not only those, CBL also has the conversion and detailing up raisin kits. So it's a really nice store to go if you're looking for something more advanced. Also, the tools in the store are beginner and low budget people friendly. So if you want to try painting your model but you lack the money to buy Iwata, they have another brand on the website called Hobby Mio. This brand of airbrush is cheaper and is great for beginners and broken unit students like me. Go to CanberraHobbyCenter.com to check out more deals and details. Give some support and love to this new shop. Hey guys, welcome back to the Crossbone Gundam X1 review. So this is the finishing of it. Well, this is probably the hardest RG that I ever built. The pieces are very tiny. Unfortunately, I lost the eye patch because my fingers shake a little bit and boom, the 4 genie just put into its own pocket. Overall, the structure and finishing are top tier for a model that is so small. Ben I did put efforts in to make it right. Another additional warning is that because X1 is small and the parts are quite thin too, if you are 
planning to penalize it, make sure you control the amount you dip on the surface. Otherwise, there's a high chance it will cause a serious corrosion on the parts. There's one salty part that I still can't move on. I bought the entire set and now Bandai gave me better. It just felt like I dumped my money into the sea. Anyways, why don't we take a closer look and see what's the improvement. Let's go. For those of you that watched my reviews for a long time, you know I always do a little comparison between old and new. Today, we have X1 Skull Heart and RG Crossbone X1 because I don't have the original XGUC X1, so SH is the closest for the competition. First, the obvious difference is the color separation. XGUC required a lot of work and you can clearly see the color gradient differences. XGUC has more plastic feeling, while the RG is darker which added a bit of realistic series feeling. Secondly, I don't know is it just me or someone else have this feeling too, XGUC is slightly taller than RG. Third, despite the amount of details RG got, I still like the XGUC face better. Which version did you like more, XGUC or RG? Tell me in the comments. Alright, just like the usual flow, we are always starting from the head. Despite I'm not a fan of the RG face, but I need to admit that Bandai did a good job for the head. For all the Crossbone Gundam fans, the signature skull on the head is not missing for sure. Although personally, I wish the red lines on the head were part separated, but unfortunately, it's stickers, but surprisingly, it didn't flip out at the moment. Compared to the XGUZ version, the eyes are less manga feeling on the RG. One of the well-known features on the Crossbone is the open face, which is heat radiation system inside the mouth. Just a bit of dark yellow and gold, and you can have the accurate light color. X1's head is quite small, so the movement won't be interrupted that easily. Moving up and down is very smooth and you can see the mouth is opening and closing which is a nice linkage. The 360 movement on the head is very smooth, it actually makes me want to spin the head because the feeling inside is satisfying. The chest is a very standard crossbone series chest. I highly recommend people to use waterside decals because as you can see for curvy surfaces and dark color base parts, the stickers actually look quite bad. If you have the chance to get the RG crossbone waterside decals, do it. For the shoulder wrap, these two orange yellow parts are beam sabers. But this is an RG, so the beam saber is a separate accessory to pose, which I'll cover later. As for the cockpit, Crossbone Gundam's got the easiest cockpit to open. All you need to do is push up and you can see the core fighter's window. As for the articulations, moving front and back is good and smooth. You can see the split armor during the movement, which is a nice small detail. However, side to side and chest spin are quite bad, which due to respect, but XGUC somehow won for those two articulations. As for the shoulders, the layering scale, color gradients, and color separations were greatly improved. At the top of the shoulders, you can open this little white piece. You will see a spot that you can put armor in. I'm pretty sure this one is for full cloth. As for the arms, it's slightly skinnier than the XGUC version, but I think it's fine. As for the articulations, 360 is simple and easy. Lifting is over 90, which is excellent. Moving front and back is not bad. The whole arm can rotate 360 and bending is touching the shoulders. I want to talk about the forearm. There's a separate joint on the forearm which allow it to pose with more realistic feeling. Finally, I don't need to rip the brand marker off and put it back on the joint again. You can simply move it and we are done. For the brand marker, you can choose between an X-shaped blade or beam shield. For those people who want to make a double shield pose, just rip one off from your RG X2. As for the hand options, other than fist hands, you'll receive a pair of open hands, buster gun hands, and melee weapon hands. Moving on is the waist. The interesting part is not the surface, but the inside. The front skirt can lift above 90 degrees. Then, let's pull off the front skirt and rotate the scissor anchor out. Push the chain part between the two joints, and here is the deployed form. Honestly, the chain of the RG version is too stiff. I dislike the XGUZ wires too, but they could've just reused the design on the RG Torgis 3 too. So far, I think MB Crossbone and RG Torgis 3 has the best wire performance. Next, the side skirt. You can see the holes on it. It's for the weapon storage. The side skirt movement is basically gone after you store the weapons on it, but we'll still take a look. It's a ball joint, which means the movement is pretty free, but in exchange, it felt pretty loose too. Back skirt is a separate 90 degrees movement, but the back skirt actually has a small easter egg. You can see the screw whip, but we can't take it out, neither have a drill to use. Come on, this is Bandai. Of course, you will see it in the PBRG Crossbone X1 Kai box. Alright, let's take a look at the legs. Additional score to Bandai removing the annoying leg positions, adjust the piece. 
thank you because that piece is useless in my opinion. As for the articulations, front kick is over 90, side kick is slightly over 90, back kick is below 90, but that's already better than most 1 to 144. As an RG, the linkage between the knee armor is a must in the criteria. The knee band may not be a U shape, but I accept the linkage. As for the ankle armor, the main armor can move a bit and two wings at the side can also move. The whole foot can move front and back side to side and moving horizontally for below 90 degrees. X1 also has the traditional RG feet design, which the tip of the foot can move individually. If we take a look under the feet, you can see a hole for you to stick a blade in. Personally, the blade under the feet is very cool and brought the kicking pose into another level. Other than under the feet, you can pull the heat dagger from the back of the legs, stick the blade in, and this is the complete heat dagger. One of the signature designs on the crossbones is the X-shaped backpack. Unlike the XGUZ, the colors are balanced rather than and stickers or blend. Each booster has a thruster at the top, which you can flip down and make it look like max output. The X shape backpack is the standard RG in the frame, which means it will be very tight at the beginning. Make sure you take your time to slowly loosen it, since the backpack components are all ball joints. So where the closing and opening side to side movements are free. If you're looking at the backpack, I think you expect it more than just the booster itself. Of course, we are going to pull it out and admire the core fighter. All we need to do is rotate the fighter head back up. Push the boosters together and here is the core fighter. Despite the size is small, but it has a lot of panel lines on the surface to increase the details. Take a look at the beam sabers that I was talking about before. The colors and details are already there, but the scale is too small so Bandai can't replicate that function which is understandable. As for the accessories, there's a pair of beam sabers. You will need to paint the orange yellow color at the bottom of the beam saber. Just like a usual beam saber, you put the effects in and here it is. The second accessory is the buster gun. I believe Bandai used the MB colors instead of the original ones, which is why you will see some orange yellow on the gun. The gun itself actually don't have interesting things to talk about, but you can equip a missile hand to recreate the scene where King Kedu was stopping a nuclear missile with this rival grenade. The third accessory is the beam zamba. You can obviously tell that this weapon is the pirate cut the beam sandbar comes with a huge and cool beam blade effect part. You can see the waves on the blade, adding the feeling of high output. The beam sandbar and buster gun can form a sand buster. The steps are simple. Rotate the emitter facing back and line it with the handle. Then stick it into the open back of the buster gun. There you go, this is sand buster. When you don't want to use these weapons, you can store the buster gun on the right side skirt and beam sandbar on the left side skirt. Next, the ABC cloak. RG version did a way, way, way better job than the XGUZ one. XGUZ is just a plastic sheet that you need to try and bend it so hard to get into the right shape. The RG one is a molded shape, so you don't need to press it as hard as you can to make it into the right shape. As you can see, the cloak has the wrinkled cloth detail, as well as broken holes on servers. Compare this to the XGUZ one. That one was pure trash. And RG gave you realistic feeling without using bad materials. There are four ball joints on the cloak, which gives the X1 some space to move and pose after the cloak is on. To equip the cloak, all you need to do is remove the head and push the cloak down, then put the head back on and it's done. Lastly, the kit included a figure of King Kedu now. I think X1 is the last RG that has a pilot figure. Kind of sad because even though I don't paint it, but missing it just feels incomplete. Alright, thanks for watching this review. I have a long time didn't write a review, so I might have gone a little rusty. Generally, X1 is a very good choice because the MG and XGUZ both sucks. I'm very happy that Bandai did make the RG crossbone right. Got to say, they didn't disappoint the slogan extreme detail. Now, I can't pick any major problems, but a lot of parts in this kit is tiny. So for those people who hate the tiny pieces, maybe this won't fit your taste, but still it's awesome. Also, I want to request Bandai to give the pilot figures back again, even though a lot of people don't paint it, but I think it's necessary to include it. Overall, if you like Crossbone Gundams, buy it. I finished the RG X1 review, so I think it's a good time for me to talk about Crossbone Animation. I saw a lot of people in the community talk about this topic pick for a very long time. I want a crossbone animation too, but please ask yourself a question. Do you really like crossbone or you just like the Gundams? I'm not being sarcastic now, but if I throw you some suits on the screen, can you name them?
All right, you might say you don't have access to the manga. Let me ask you something. Do you know the name of this suit and who's the pilot? The answer is Dictus and is piloted by Callisto of Light and Shadow. Based on the Dictus cells, I strongly believe that most of you only like the Gundams. Unless you actually read the manga and knows something other than Crossbone Gundams. You don't get to yell about Crossbone anime because even if Sunrise gave it to you, you will be like, what the f***? The design is so ugly and weird. You think I'm speaking nonsense? No, take a look at F91 and Victory. I bet some of the people who screamed for crossbone anime didn't even like the grunts. A Gundam anime is not all about Gundams. It includes stories, factions, and other MS developments. So you can hate me for those criticism, but please think about my questions before you talk back in the comment section. Do you like crossbone or just crossbone Gundams? Thank you for watching today's review. I hope you learned something out of it. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell next to it. Join my Discord and follow my IG at 7 Special thanks to Camera Hobby Center for sponsoring today's video. Their IG, Facebook, and website links are in the description. Donation links are down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.